Okay, hi there, welcome to a micro video. Uh, let's spend a couple of minutes looking at two examples of how to calculate the price elasticity of supply. Well, elasticity of supply is a measure of responsiveness of output, if you like supply of, let's say, a product good X, following a change in demand and price. And if you've understood the price mechanism, you'll know that the profit motive suggests that higher prices incentivizes, encourages producers to expand their production to meet growing demand. But the extent to which this happens depends on the price elasticity of supply. Equally, when prices and demand are going down, we look to see the extent to which firms cut back on production. So here are two examples of how to calculate price elasticity of supply. First one uh, relates to the steel industry. It's anticipated that global steel prices will drop by some 5% between 2018-2019. Output in the UK steel industry is forecast to decline from 7,500 metric tons in 2018 to 6,900 metric tons in 2019. Based on this information, cal uh, estimate or calculate the price elasticity of supply for the UK with respect to the changing price of world steel. Okay, so uh, as always, uh, if you've been following these videos, put the formula into your answer straight away. You'll get credit for doing that. So price elasticity of supply equals the percentage change in steel output divided by the percentage change in steel prices. Well, the change in output, it's falling, it's fallen by 600 metric tons uh, divided by the original level 7,500 multiplied by 100 that gives a percentage change of minus 8%. We know that steel prices have fallen by 5%. So our coefficient of elasticity is minus 8 divided by minus 5 giving a coefficient of plus 1.6 which suggests a fairly elastic response. Steel, maybe the British steel industry is sensitive to a fall in the price. It might make some steel plants, for example, less commercially viable, less profitable over time. Our second example takes us to Brazil and the changing price of soybean. 2018, we're told that 119 million metric tons of soybean were produced in Brazil. It must be one of the world's biggest producers. And that was up from 114 million tons in the preceding crop year. Uh, between 2017 and 18, the average global price for soybeans increased from $371 to $459 per metric ton. Based on this information, estimate the price elasticity of supply for Brazilian soybean. Well, here we go. As always, put the formula in at the start of the answer. If you get into the habit of doing this, you'll pick up those little credit, credit marks all the way through an exam and you'll find your grade is higher. Elasticity of supply in this case is the percentage change in the output of soybeans divided by the percentage change in the world price of soybeans. So we need to work out two percentages. Well, the change in supply is plus 5 divided by the original 114 times 100. That's plus 4.4%. The change in price is from $371 to 459 That's a change of $88, if my maths is correct. Divide by the original, 371 multiply by 100 giving a percentage price increase of plus 23.7 so there's been a 4.4 percent rise in output partly on the back of a 23.7 percent change in the price giving a coefficient of elasticity of supply again plus supply curves upward sloping of plus 0.19 that's a low figure that's a and that's a fairly inelastic supply perhaps it takes time for brazilian soybean producers to ramp up production in response to a change in the world price. There may be some limits or some capacity constraints to their production, certainly in the short term. Perhaps if global prices stay above $450 per tonne, then in the next year, we'd expect to see a sharper increase in output. In other words, an increase in the elasticity of supply. So there we go. Two examples of how to calculate price elasticity of supply.